Did you bring a Bible? Take your Bible, turn to John chapter 3. I've asked God to let me preach the gospel at least once a month. If I preach other things, I think God leads in that. There are things that we need as far as Christian life, Christian growth, things that we should do, things that we should not do. But I think sometimes we lose sight, I, I know I do, in teaching Sunday school, preaching a sermon, Sunday night, Wednesday night, uh, doing Watchmen videos or spending two hours doing a live broadcast, Pastor Mike Online. I, I try to teach a lot of things, try to teach the whole counsel of God. And undoubtedly, and I know this because people have written in, they've told me their stories, how certain people just, they came to know the Lord because I made a video on a certain topic that interested them. I, I tell the story all the time. I love this story. It's one of my favorite ones about the man that uh, was a Roman Catholic. He went to the laundromat in his town, was doing laundry, and he saw there on the folding table some, some of our DVDs. Don't know where, what town it was, nowhere around here, I'm pretty sure. And um, don't know who laid the videos out there. I don't know who copied them. I didn't give them permission to copy them, but they copied them anyway. That's a joke. I tell people to copy them. If you're, they're copyrighted, which means if you're going to copy them, copy them right. Do a good job. But the man looked at them, and on his way out, he grabbed one that I don't know what topic it was that got his attention. He went home and put his clothes away and sat down and watched it. When he got done, he got back in his car, went back to the laundromat, and got the rest of the DVDs that were on the table and took it home and watched them. And he said, I want you to know, he said, I went out and got me a King James Bible. And he said, I'm born again. I'm saved. Now, I don't know exactly what passage of Scripture dealt with him. I don't know what topic it was that he watched. I just know that in... A lot of the, well, practically everything I do is going to have a lot of scriptures in it. Which, to be honest, is unusual nowadays. Preachers talk about everything in the world except what God said. And to me, it is what God said that changes people. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. I'm going to give you an example, something I read. Lord, help me find it. Uh, turn your Bible to John chapter, chapter 4. John chapter 4, I'm going to show you something I, I found. Let's see here if I can find it again. Ah, here it is. John chapter 4 is the story of the woman at the well. The Samaritan woman who came to the well, met Jesus. He told her about the water that he had. That if she drank of that, she would never thirst again. Um, he said to her, I, I want to speak to you and your husband. And he knew the situation. G I, Jesus knows our situation. And the woman said, I don't have a husband. And Jesus said, you've well said, for you've had five husbands. And the man you're with now is not your husband. Now, let me say this to you. Living with a man without the benefit of marriage is wrong. But all of us do wrong, and when Jesus came to us, He didn't come to us when we started doing right. He came to us while we were in sin. That's when Jesus came to us. I'm glad that I have a Savior that loves sinners. 
And he loves them enough to teach them and tell them that there is something better for them than they've ever had. This woman, you can imagine, if she has gone through five husbands and she's now with a man that is not her husband, she's looking for something. Something that she thinks she will find in the next husband that she didn't find in the next husband. And the man she's with now, I guess she got tired of marrying these men. But she's not finding in these husbands, in these men, what it is that she's really looking for. But when she found Jesus, she found it. And... So Jesus tells her, and she goes into the city, and uh, I want to look at verse 34, John chapter 4, because I'm going to work my way down to this verse. Jesus said unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye there yet four months, and then come at the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Can I get God's people to say amen to that? There are people out there that are a woman at the well who are just waiting to hear something about Jesus. Something that they did. This woman did not know anything about him, did not know who he was, but she met him. And I say to us that we at least give the people that we know and the people that we meet one opportunity to meet Jesus. So verse 36, and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon you bestowed no labor, other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. Now I want you to look at verse 39 because this is what stood out to me. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him. For the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that ever I did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And look at verse 41. And many more believed because of his own, what? Word. And said unto the woman, now we believe, look at this. Not because of thy saying. For we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now a woman is always a representative of a church. This woman went to the people that she knew. She went to the people of her town. She did not go a thousand miles away to be a missionary in some foreign land. And I'm not against that in the least bit. But we love the people who are our own people. Or at least we should. We love our own kind and there's nothing wrong with that when it comes to wanting them to know the gospel. I don't mind ministering in Kenya. I don't mind ministering in our stream going to Europe or going to Australia or going to Africa. There's, there's a family in India that stays up late and they watch our service. There are people in Kenya right now that are that we're streaming this to their village and they're watching our service. And I certainly don't mind that. But God knows my heart. I have a heart and a desire for the people of Festus and Crystal City and DeSoto and Hillsborough and Jefferson County. I want my own people to know the gospel. I want them to meet Jesus. And what Jesus said here... Um... What verse was it? Verse 45. Then when he was coming to the Galileans, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. What am I missing here? Oh, verse 42. Said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves. And when we give out our words, we might be introducing Jesus to people, but until we give them the word of God, they won't know him and they won't believe him. There's power in the words of the Lord. It's power to save people, power to change their life. And you would, here's a woman, she's 
had five husbands, I'm sure that she has a negative reputation among the people that she lives. Or maybe she just hangs around other women and other people who live lives similar to her own. Either way, she went to her own people and introduced them to Jesus Christ. I wonder, even though we have churches all over this county, I wonder and I believe that most people in Jefferson County do not know who Jesus really is. And he needs to be introduced to them. And they need to hear not what we have to say, even though we're witnesses. They need to hear what Jesus has to say. Now, John chapter 3. If that just that I was reading that the other day and that just stuck out in my mind what they said. They said we believe not because of what the woman said, but because of what Jesus said. We heard it ourselves. Give people the word of God when you're talking to them. Know enough Bible verses so that just creeps out in your conversation. And they're going to think what they're going to think about you. But you may find that one. That one. Who is drawn to you. Because they heard the word of God coming out of your lips. You never, you never know who that person's going to be. John chapter 3. Do you believe the Bible? Say amen. Verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. A ruler of the Jews. I want you to notice up on the screen that I have that underlined. A ruler of the Jews. This man already has a religion. Most people that you know will have a religion of some kind. Whether they call themselves Baptist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Buddhist, Atheist. Atheism to me is as big a religion as anything. It's a religion of man. It says man is God, not God. But it is a religion nonetheless. They already have a religion. Does that mean we should leave them alone? Absolutely not. This man was a ruler of the Jews. If anybody, according to him, according to the Jews, if anybody would go to heaven, it would be Nicodemus because he's a ruler of the Jews. Surely this religious figure, this religious leader is going to go to heaven. But Jesus knew the truth. He knew he wasn't. So the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher Come from God. The three primary Middle East based religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, and at least Islam along with Christianity, and maybe some in, in Judaism, will believe that Jesus is a great teacher. The Muslims say that about Jesus. They just don't like that he's the son of God. They say Allah has no God. But they at least accept that Jesus was a prophet or a man sent from God. We know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again. Underline that in your Bible. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? It's a legitimate question. He didn't understand it. So Jesus now is going to clarify what he said. Which is another aspect of your Bible. If you read one thing and don't understand it, keep reading. Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And if you don't understand that statement, keep reading. God will clear it up for you. That which is born, he says in verse 6, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. 
What I am standing here today is the product of Milton Don Hoggard, big youngin, they called him, who talked my mother into going out with him and wouldn't leave her alone. And she had two wonderful children out of that. But me being born of Milton Don Hoggard does not get me into heaven. And I'm going to explain something here in a minute. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would bless this message. Father, I don't know who's going to listen to it. That is not up to me. Of the people here, Father, I don't know who's going to listen to it. That is up to you. But Father, it is upon me and upon us to tell the truth and to preach the gospel. And Father, there's religions everywhere and you know every one of them. But God, there is only one way to be with you in heaven for eternity. And Father, teach somebody that way. Teach them that truth. Give them that life through Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that you would bless the message. Father, that it would fall upon ears that would love to hear it. And those, Father, who are already born again, Father, they would be glad upon hearing the truth of the Word of God. Those who are not born again, Father, that they would be convinced that there is only one way. And it's Jesus Christ and no other way. Father, convince somebody by way of the words of God, not my words, but your words. Convince them that they need to be saved and show them how to be saved. Father, I pray that you'd bless your gospel wherever it's heard. Father, bless the message, I pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you what this birth is about, what being born again is about, what it is, and what it is not. What being born again is not. Number one. Being born again is not merely a change of religions. A change of religions. Just because you were, you grew up one religion, let's say you were Catholic, or let's say you were Baptist, or let's say you grew up in an atheist home, or whatever it was, or a Jewish home, you grew up that way, and then you started seeing stuff on the internet. You started looking at the internet, started watching videos, and some guy explained some kind of religious fad, or some kind of religious idea, and you said, you know what, I'm going to follow that. Just you changing religions or changing your mind about a religion is not being born again. Memorizing a catechism is not being born again. Some of you who know what that is, some of you don't know what that is. But in the Roman Catholic Church, in the Lutheran Church, and maybe some others, they teach this list of things that children are to memorize their religious ideas, they are Christian-based ideas, and they memorize them, and then somebody sits down and says, and asks them questions, okay, uh, what do you believe about God? And they recite the answer. Okay, what do you believe about Jesus? And they recite the answer. You may be able to recite a catechism, you may have recited a catechism, and by doing that, a religious person may have told you, Okay, you're a member of the church now. You're going to heaven. Memorizing a catechism is not being born again. Anybody, anybody can memorize religious talk. But that does not make you born again so that you can be and see the kingdom of God. Being born again is not a promise to do good deeds. 
Some of you guys say there's no atheist in foxholes. No atheist in foxholes. There'd be guys that bombs would be coming at them. Grenades be coming at them. Uh, bullets be coming at them. And they'll say, God, get me out of this and I'll be good the rest of my life. That is not being born again. A promise to do good deeds does not make you saved and right with God. Church membership is not being born again. I have heard testimonies of people who grew up in church. They were raised in church. They were admitted as far as church membership when they were young, a boy or a girl. They grew up in that church. They continued to stay in that church. And I've heard them say that it dawned on them one day that they had played church. They attended service. They gave tithes. They said amen. They carried a Bible and they were not saved. They were not born again. Being born again is not a sensational or some sort of ecstatic religious fervor or experience. You may have been part of a service and you had a, an emotional response to that. And you may have said, oh, that was the Holy Ghost. Or somebody said, well, that was God coming in you or whatever. That in itself is not being born again. I know of people who are saved and are born again who did not show or display very much emotion as a result of that. God, I believe that you will have emotional responses when you are saved and after you are saved. But just because... Listen, uh, pagans have emotional responses. Voodoo practitioners have emotional responses. Muslims, the Sunni Muslims, have an ecstatic experience where they see visions and hear the voice of God or Allah. That is not being born again. A lifelong dedication to a religion or a religious cause is not being born again. You can join a monastery and die and go to hell. Martin Luther was a monk in a monastery who recognized that he was not saved and right with God. He chastised his body. He recited prayers. He did everything that a Roman Catholic monk is supposed to do to purge himself from sin. And he knew he did not have the righteousness of God. Being born again is not a religious knowledge of any kind. And being born again is not you becoming aware of your racial identity. I have combated uh, British Israelism, the fact that white Caucasians are the real Jews, and everybody else is not. They're going to hell because they're black or they're brown or they're yellow or they're red, and they didn't come. They're, they did, their ancestors didn't come from the Caucasus Mountains, and they're not white Anglo-Saxons, and they are not saved because they're not white. I am also hearing about people who are who are identified with a black Israel movement. That we, that we blacks are the true Israelites. We are the sons of Solomon or whatever. We're the real Jews and we hate whitey. And all white people are, are Satan and we're going to kill them all because that's what God wants us to do. That's not being born again. The Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. That is all the races. If you are part of a race or a culture, that does not make you right with God. We know that in Revelation chapter 7, we know that every nation and every tribe and every kind of person is going to meet around the throne and worship Jesus for all of eternity. Somebody say amen. That has nothing to do with you being born again. Here's what being born again is. Number one, it is a new creature. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. If you think that you can be saved and be born again and still live the old lifestyle, you're not right with God. If you think that you can be born again and still carry over your drunkenness and your drugs and your fornication and your cursing and your lies and your thievery and everything. If you think that you can carry that with you, you are not born again. When you are saved and born again, God puts a new nature in you. The things that you used to do, you don't want to do them anymore. 
The things you used to drink, you don't want to drink them anymore. The things you used to smoke, you don't want to smoke them no more. You don't want to take no more drugs. You don't want to look at women anymore. You don't want to be full of pornography. You don't want to go chasing around other men and other women. You want to be right with God. Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Circumcision, the Jews think that God's going to look at that and say, okay, you're a son of Abraham, you can come to heaven. They're wrong. There are people who become part of fraternal organizations or they, they become part of a church or they become part of a religious institution and think because their name is on a roll somewhere that they're born again and that they're going to heaven. And that's not true. It's a new creature. Churches are full of lost People who are still doing the same things that lost people do. And they're not right with God. Being born again is a new creature. Being born again means that there is a new man. I'll never forget the day that Keith Crum got saved. I led him to the Lord. He was at the hospital. And right after, right after he prayed the sinner's prayer and asked Jesus into his heart... The doctor came in and told him that he had cancer and they probably couldn't do anything about it. And you know what? That man got out of the hospital. You know, what he t- three days, three days after he got saved, he's telling Brady and Bradley, he said, boys, I don't know how to explain this, but he just, he says, I feel like I got somebody living inside of me. And I told Brady and Bradley, I said, it took you guys years to know that. He knew it in three days. When you are born again, you have a new man living on the inside of you. And that new man is Jesus. Ephesians 4.22. That you, listen, I don't care if you're not happy about this. I'm tickled. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. Get rid of that old man. Amen. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You men out there. The greatest thing that you can do to your family. Is get right with God. And your wife will say. I got a brand new husband now. Where was I? You put on the new man. Which after God is created in righteousness. And true holiness. You see when you get saved. And you get right with God. I don't have to preach about all the things that you're doing wrong. God will convince you of them and He'll start taking them out of your life for you. That doesn't mean I'm not going to preach those things. It just means I don't have to. God will take all of that stuff out. And listen, if you're worried, I knew a man, he was worried if he got right with God, that he wouldn't be able to stick with it. Leave that up to God. Leave that up to God. God will let you stick with it. Amen? Colossians chapter 3, but now also you put off all these anger. See, when you get right with God, all of a sudden now you're not angry with everybody anymore. Wrath, malice, blasphemy. You, when you're right with God, you won't go around saying God this and God that and Jesus Christ and everything else. That'll be taken out of your mouth. Who can say amen to that? Some of you guys used to cuss like a sailor. You used to cuss like a construction worker. I knew them. I know how they cuss. And by the way, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. There were things when my daddy cussed, there were things that he would say. And there were things I never heard my daddy say. That people are say, women are saying now. It's worse. You put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another. Sing, sing, and now you don't have to lie to your wife anymore. You don't have, hey, children, you don't have to lie to your mom and daddy anymore about stuff you did because you don't do them no more. Wouldn't that be worth it? Young people, wouldn't it be worth it to be right with God? You don't have to worry about your parents finding out. You put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You see, God will do this in you. You, It's not, we're not telling you that you have to do it to yourself. You let God do it and God will do it better than you can anyway. There's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all in and all. And it's not just an American gospel. 
It's not just a Kenyan gospel. It is not, it is not just a white Anglo gospel. It is a gospel for every nation and Christ doesn't care where you came from. In fact, the truth of it is, the worst kind of people there is, is the best kind of people for God to save. And it's a new way. Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. You wouldn't walk into a church because you were afraid of God to get you. You wouldn't come into a church because you were afraid you would be a hypocrite because you know the way you live. But I'm telling you, when you let God birth you again, let, let, me, let me explain this. Your first birth was not your idea. When you were born, it, you had nothing to do with it. That was your mom and daddy that did that. Your second birth is not your, it's what God does. God is the father of your second birth. And God doesn't make junk. He said, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. See, I, I'm going to ask you guys, who in here, you know beyond any doubt that if, some, if Roy came out, pulled his pistol out, started firing on everybody, put it away, Roy, put your bullet back in your pocket, he's our Barney Fife back there. If you died today, which of you knows you're going to heaven? And see, they're not bragging. They're not boasting. And they're not wishing. They have the full assurance of faith. It's a new way. It's a clear conscience. 1 Timothy 1.5 Now the end of the commandment is charity of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. You see, what God will do is God will clear your conscience up. And even though you'll still remember the old things that you did, you'll also know that they are forgiven and God covered them with the blood of Jesus Christ and He remembers them no more. Hebrews 9.13 I'll just ask the crowd. Have you ever had a seriously guilty conscience? If the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean, that's the Old Testament, sanctifies to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered Himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? What God does is that He clears your conscience. And you say, I know what I did. And I know what I used to be. But I know also that I'm not that man anymore. I'm not that woman anymore. I'm a different person now. And if everybody around you don't accept that, move on, because God does. And God is the one who gives you the gift of a clear conscience. That's what being born again is. Hebrews 10, having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. When he said earlier, you must be born of water and of spirit. Somebody tell me what that water was he's talking about. The Bible. The Word of God. This is the water of life. This is the water. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 that Jesus washes His church with water by the Word of God. So you know what, you know what God's people do? They go throughout the day. They've encountered temptation. They've encountered sin. They encountered the world and the old ways. And at the end of the day, they get their Bible out. 
and they read the Word of God. And God takes all of that stuff that they did that day where they failed God that day, and God washes all that away clean. Somebody say amen. If that's what God does. So he said, verse 23, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. For those of you here that are saved, I am desperately trying to provoke you to go tell somebody. And who better to witness to sinners than sinners. You're the one who used to live that way and you know them. Those who did drugs, you can go talk to the drug people because you know what they go through. Those of you who drank, you can go talk to the drunkards because you know what they go through. Those who used to fornicate, be stuck on pornography, those who used to have a filthy mind, you can go talk to those people and say, hey, listen, I know what you're going through. But God cleaned me up. I have a better life now. And God can do that with you. Because I believe that there really are people out there who don't want to be in bondage anymore. I sat across a table of drug addicts and I looked in their faces and I saw that they didn't want to be that way anymore. And he's the one that can make them free. I'm trying to provoke you to go and tell somebody. See these pews here? I'm not necessarily concerned about whether or not they get filled. I want it, but that's not my biggest concern. My biggest concern is that there's somebody that you know that's going to go to hell, and you're the one who can do something about it. That's what I'm concerned about. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. Let me hear an amen from somebody if you think being born again makes you want to go to church. The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, it's the water of the word that clears your conscience from day to day. And now you know that you are forgiven. We serve a God whose mercies are brand new every single day. It would be like if you got up every day and magically you went to the car and the car was still brand new. And you did that for the re same car rest of your life. It smelled brand new, didn't smell like you. Smelled brand new, operated brand new, drove brand new, shiny brand new. It would be like that, only better. Because God's mercy is brand new every day. To those who are born again. How are you born again? Let me run through this. He came into his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. God is the one dealing with you right now. And he says to you, I can make you new. I can make you brand new. I can clear your conscience. I can forgive all your sins. I can put new desires, holy desires in you. I can make you right with your family. I can make you right with your wife or your husband. I can make you right with your children or your parents. I can make you right at work. I can clear up everything that there ever was about you. I can make it brand new. God can do that and he offers it to you right now. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born of water and of the Spirit. And then he said, He that is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And then First Peter tells us what the Spirit is. 
being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This is why, in this message, I've given you scriptures. Because I know that it's the Bible that can make you brand new. It's the Bible that can make you born again. This is the DNA of your Father that makes the new life possible. Let me, let me go through what we say to sinners who want to come to Jesus. This is called the Romans road to salvation. Because some of the verses, a lot of the verses are in the book of Romans. Here's what Romans says. For all have sinned. Read these out loud with me, church. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans 6.23. Say it with me. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is the gift of God? Say it with me. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Somebody say Amen. Romans 10, read this out loud with me. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, read this out loud with me. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Bow your heads.